Hello everyone. In this talk I would like to give you a quick overview over tools and patterns for making production ready R code and how to make it easy to share it among your team. My name is Marcin Dubal and I'm a data scientist and software engineer in the Absilon company and my main area of interest is how to help teams in optimize their R project structure and to work efficiently. I see from my experience uh, two challenges ahead of data science teams. One is to create the value, so this is basically their uh, daily business and that's what they do and they are, they are experts in this. But there is also this uh, common area for all data science teams how to share value uh, among team members or with the community or with the clients, how to deploy, how to make sure that it is without errors, it is stable and reproducible. So in this talk, I will focus on the on the, on some tools and, and and guidelines how to be sure that that this value can be shared easily. I see three building blocks, three areas uh, where the problems can occur. First one is that the code that we are using is different, and it is basically solved with the version control systems such as Git. Um, so we'll go briefly through it and for some extensions to it. The second part is the environment. So if we are using the same version of the packages and the system and other dependencies, and it will be also solved quite easily. You just need to know the solutions. The third part uh, it can be the data is different. Uh, so for example, the code was based on some test example and on the production, it is the, the, the real data set is used and there are some differences. So we'll see how we can assure that, um, that, that the workflow is, is correct and checked. Uh, so let's start with the, with the version control, uh, with the simple thing. You're probably all familiar with it, uh, but I want you to make sure that you and your teams are using Git, for example, properly. So, uh, for sure, the the must is to uh, to use it always in every project and use it heavily. So all the all the features of it it will create a good habit. So the crucial thing is to use branches. I've seen a lot of teams that were. Uh, committing directly to master into this causing a lot of problems. So use branches and it will allow you to collabor collaborate independently and you can switch between your features easily. Uh, make sure that your commit messages are informative and clearly describe the changes what, that are happening. Uh, it will help you to, uh, to see, to scan through your history uh, what happened and to find uh, your changes in the future. And also manage the task board. Uh, it is a great way to organize your view of what you're doing, to split your your tasks into smaller issues and to work on them efficiently. So w when you earlier think through what do you want to achieve, it will make your branch structure more effective. Another part uh, related uh, to the repository is how we set the continuous integration. So a set of events triggered automatically, for example, to run unit test before we, we merge some, some piece of code. Uh, this, is, this is a crucial part, but this is somehow annoying uh, and boring process. And it might occur that you skip it uh, when you are like de 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 delivering features um, uh, uh, fast. So having it automated is a great tool to be sure that it happens. Uh, I would like to, to introduce to you the GitHub actions. Uh, I think they are a cool way to, to set the, uh, the continuous integration because you can use the, a lot of ready uh, tools from the marketplace, but also uh, you have a lot of uh, flexibility in building your own solutions and setting it uh, as you 
wish it to work. Uh, check out those links to, to get more. Uh, it is very easy, so why not to use it? Uh, I also would like to recommend you using the GitHub templates. Uh, it is really cool. Probably your organization or team has some set of standards, good practices, how to uh, to build the projects. So they can be easily shared with the templates. Uh, we are doing it in Epsilon with the shiny structure and we have our own, own way how to do this. So uh, with the GitHub templates, we are sure uh, that we will follow the same the same pattern uh, in, in the whole team. So the second building block, the environment. Uh, lack of development environment is the root of a lot of problems uh, because basically uh, you can write the same code, but it will behave differently on different machines because it uses different versions. So it will it can be really uh, painful and it can also affect your other work. So make sure that you have a development environment set. But luckily, uh, there is a great solution to this uh, in our uh, in our world uh, is RNF. Uh, what it is doing, RNF is a package that uh, creates a separate environment for each project so that the packages and the versions are only for this project and they're not affecting any others. And it's also super easy to be shared. Uh, the whole configuration is saved in the single file called rnflock and you can commit it, push it to the repository and your colleagues can, can just take it and reuse it. Uh, it is very simple to set up. You might be familiar with Packrat. It, it also has like an icon in our studio, uh, but please don't use it, please stick to the RNF. It is much more simpler and intuitive and the defaults are, are better. Uh, I find it very hard to set up a packrat, but with RNF it's uh, just one comment you will see uh, on the next slide. It also simplifies a lot a process of using Docker and building images there, uh, because all the restoring logic is already in the RNF log file, so you can just do the uh, Docker snapshot and send to the Docker Hub your new version of the image, uh, and it will be restored from the RNF, so you don't need to modify the Docker file. Uh, so working with uh, RNF is super easy. You basically need four commands. So you initialize that in your project, you install the packages that you need, and then you snapshot the package versions used in the project with the dependencies um, and it updates the RNF log file that you can then share um, and your colleagues can restore your environment and that's all and you are sure that you are having the same environment and you're working on the same code and um, you can also do this process uh, on the server uh, to, to, to restore on the air there and the deployment will be will be smooth. Uh, the data workflow, so the, so the third part, our third area. I would like to, um, to show you the Drake package, uh, which I think is really, really cool to keep the, the data process clean. Um, it organizes your project or your files, functions and results uh, in the single plan, uh, which, is, which is like a, a single source of truth. So you can have a mess in your scripts, but you can always check in the plan, so what is actually happening in my data workflow step by step, and what are the dependencies. And for this, the Drake is creating a really cool visual structure, visual graph of all the dependencies, dependencies what is happening where. And also what I really like in Drake is that it's kind of lazy in doing updates. So in this example here, uh, the um, the function that is creating the hist was modified and it is uh, outdated and also uh, when you rerun the whole process uh, all the dependencies of, of this part will need to be rerun but not the others that are up to date uh, so Drake uh, controls it so it is especially useful if there are some heavy calculations involved. So 
you don't need to worry whether I should update this part or not, and uh, Drake takes care of it. So this is this is super cool. Uh, I would like to present you one example from real life, from a real project that I was working on with client. So you see that the data process is uh, a little bit complicated here, but having this structure really helped me to go through it with the client and to discuss and to make sure that uh, the logic, the business logic here is correct. Uh, also, this is great for finding some bottlenecks. So here, for example, the loading row data into the application, it's, it's kind of long in comparison to, to other parts. So uh, if uh, we would like to uh, speed up the process, we know where parts uh, to optimize. Uh, the other crucial thing when we are talking about data is making sure that all the assumptions that we have in code are fulfilled when we load a new data set. And this is why um, in Epsilon we've created the data validator package. And it is available on GitHub, it's open sourced, um, and it creates the nice uh, visual report based on the rules from Asserter package. You might be familiar with it. Um, the, the report created, as you can see on the GIF, it's a nice HTML report that you can share, for example, via email with the management, and it is totally independent from the R. Uh, also, you can set uh, triggering such, such report um, on, uh, on some events, for example, on, on RStudio Connect, and uh, it, it will be uh, automated. Uh, the last part about data is uh, how to load it into Shiny efficiently. I recommend the Plumber package here because it allows you to load only what is needed. So uh, usually there is no need to, to load a whole big data set uh, into the application and uh, Plumber allows you to build REST API uh, that simply converts your uh, your your logic uh, into API, so you can grab what you what you truly need. It's also super easy to to deploy it with the Docker or RStudio Connect. So check the uh, Plumber documentation. Also, one more point: make sure that you are using efficient data libraries like FST, Data Table, or Arrow. It can vastly improve the performance of your application. So three takeaways for uh, each area. Uh, always use version control, follow the rules, use branches, do the code review. Uh, this is super important. And set a working environment, development environment for the project with Arenf, with Docker or with both. Uh, this is a must for, for every project to make sure that everything's work uh, correctly. And organize and validate your data and use Plumber if needed. Uh, be careful to not overload your application with with, with the two big data sets. Thank you. Uh, I will be uh, super excited to discuss those and other R related issues uh, with you. You can reach me on Twitter, on email. Uh, check the Epsilon uh, site and Epsilon blog for uh, nice solutions. And thank you very much. <laughs>